Hello, we are Miguel Robotics. Here is our developmental team. Now we will introduce the competition team, which consists of eight students. The mission demonstration score is divided into four components. The first is the timeline, which is worth 10% of the total score. We are given 15 minutes to set up the drone, 30 minutes to complete the mission, and then 10 minutes for teardown and a 10 minute timeout if necessary. The second component is the operators, which are worth 30%. We must have one safety pilot and one GCS operator who are dedicated to manual flight override and autopilot operation respectively. The third component is the airdrop, which is worth 50%. The UAV must be able to drop a payload using ODLC or remaining above a 75 feet altitude. The final component of scoring is operational excellence, which is worth 10%. This is a subjective measure of team performance, which includes evaluation of things such as operational professionalism, communication between members, reaction to system failures, and attention to safety. System overview. Our UAV is a hybrid quadcopter. We settled on a VTOL design to its efficiency in fixed wing flight while maintaining the agility of a multi-copter design. Our UAV has a wingspan of 3 meters, height of 0.5 meters, and a length of 2.3 meters. With a weight of 22 kilograms fully loaded, our design is based on what is called a quad plane configuration, meaning that the rotors are arranged in the traditional quadcopter configuration, but with the added possibility of a fixed wing aircraft. In fixed wing flight, we take advantage of our main airfoil spanning three meters with a cord length of approximately 400 millimeters and our empennage. It consists of three control surfaces, rudder, right and left elevators placed at the rear of the aircraft. Our main airfoil also has four control surfaces two ailerons, and two flaps, one per side. Our fifth motor is a T-Motor AT7224 KV-190 placed at the front of the aircraft in a polar configuration, paired with a 22-inch diameter at a pitch of 10 inches propeller. This associated with a total of seven control surfaces gives us enhanced control over the aircraft and gives the pilot as well as the autopilot the best possible flight configuration. Because of limited testing time due to Canadian weather conditions, only the quadcopter configuration has had sufficient testing and gives us enough confidence for flight. It will be the only configuration used for this year's competition. When it comes to quadcopter flight, our four main motors are T-Motors V807 KV170 motors in conjunction with 27-inch carbon fiber propellers at a pitch of 8.8 .8 inches. This motor assembly is working together with four T-Motor flame 180 amps ESCs, making sure that no matter the conditions, the ESCs have a large enough safety margin for our, the, our motors rated at 150 amps max amperage. This full quadcopter configuration gives us a total possible max vertical lift of 79.4 kilos. This means that our theoretical takeoff throttle percentage is at 46%, which is considered very favorable. The drone is powered by four 6S lithium polymer batteries or LiPos. In order to accommodate for the 12S architecture of the drone, two banks of two batteries in series are used for a 12S nominal voltage of 48 volts and total capacity of 34 amp hours. The autopilot used is the CUAV X7 Plus combined with the PX4 open source software and the CUAV CRTK 2HP positioning system. These together, together give us the best user experience for the pilot and ground station operator. It is also the easiest implementation possible with the onboard computer. In this instance, the onboard computer is a Jetson Nano developer kit. The computer vision is done using the Raspberry Pi HQ camera paired with a 6mm telephoto lens. These provide us the computing power required for onboard computer vision and GPS calculations. These are taken care of by the Jetson while the Pixhawk is handling all the autonomous flight requirements. All flight planning, computer vision, and all other computations are done on board with no dependency on the ground station. Manual flight is driven by the FR Sky X8R receiver and Tyrannus QX7 transmitter, while the communication between the drone and ground station is handled by the CUAV P9 radio system. It runs between 902 and 928 MHz frequency and is rated for 40 km range. Our payload consists of five servos and five DC motors controlled by an Arduino, which can be triggered by either the pilot, ground station operator, or autonomously, either through the autopilot, Jetson, or Tyrannus transmitter using PWM. 
The camera we are using is a Raspberry Pi H2 camera with a 16mm telephoto lens. Based on the requirements for ODLC, it had the best performance and specs out of the cameras we looked at. We are ensuring optimal performance by flying at a fixed altitude that has been decided ahead of time so that the camera can already be set to see images from that predetermined altitude. This ensures the camera has the best image quality possible at each time. The LDLC system being used is a combination of OpenCV and PyTorch and is trained by a YOLO V8 pre-trained neural network. The payload system is a hoist mechanism. The bottles are attached to a fishing line that is wrapped on a pulley that rotates on a shaft. The pulley has a gear attached to it actually that meshes onto another gear which is mounted onto a motor. When the motor spins, the gearing spins the pulley which lowers the bottle. The string is held onto the pulley via a small hole and the friction of the fishing line. This way, when the line is lowered, it freely detaches from the pulley without need for actuation of any kind. To ensure the bottles are only dropped when required, there is a locking mechanism on each module. This is done via a server arm that locks into a groove on the pulley. The weight of the bottle rests on the arm during flight, and the server retracts the arm when needed. The drop time is limited by the maximum speed of the motor. The motors were chosen to have a maximum speed of 500 RPM, which translates to 10 meters per second on the pulley. With the minimal drop height being roughly 30 meters, this translates to a drop time of 30 seconds. However, to ensure that the string detaches from the pulley, a small portion of the drop will be in freefall. This has shown to not damage the bottle during testing. This brings the estimated drop time to 25 seconds. For modularity and ease of mounting, the system is built in modules of two bottles, each of which has its own dual motor controller. The motor controllers and servos are all controlled by a main payload controller board that is separate from the main flight computer. This controller communicates to the main flight computer to know when to release the bottles. This way, the payload can be swapped with another payload module seamlessly and can be changed for more or fewer bottles. For testing procedure, tests were done on a very high staircase to test the dropping mechanism itself. Four of these tests were conducted through the iterative design process. Between these tests, many mini-tests were done from a height of 1.5 meters as well. To test communication between software and payload systems, three tests were conducted on a smaller test drone. Finally, the payload system was mounted onto Flappy. Regarding the proximity to the target, this was a very minor consideration for our design, since the drop is very slow and steady. Very little sway was observed on the drop tests, and none of these were even close to the 15 to limit prescribed by competition rules. For this reason, statistics on this are unavailable. Some alternatives considered for the payload drop mechanism include parachutes and magnetic dampening. Communications. The communication modules present on the drone are the CUAV P9 radio, X8R FR Sky receiver, and CUAV CRTK 2HP RTK module. The P9 radio handles the telemetry communications between the drone and the ground station. It runs between 902 and 928 MHz with frequency hopping. It has a link rate of 276 kilobytes per second and up to 1 watt output power. With its 12 to 60 volt 3S to 12S power input range, it is perfect for our 12S architecture. The FR Sky X8R handles all the manual flight and can be used for payload deployment thanks to its 8 PWM outputs and up to 16 channels using SBUS through the autopilot. It runs on 2.4 GHz. The CUAV CRTK 2HP is our positioning system of choice. With its dual antenna configuration paired with the ground antenna, it gives us centimeter level precision and gives us more accurate yaw data. This, in conjunction with our safety GPS module, gives us triple redundant yaw measurements and double redundant GPS position. We also use Wi-Fi running on 2.4 and 5 GHz frequencies for programming the onboard computer while on the ground, allowing for fast software updates and on-the-go adjust adjustments. The design for the fuselage is based on small balsa model airplanes and then scaled for the size of our drone. Inspiration was taken from our wing design shown by the foam and MDF material choice. The nose and shape were taken from passenger airplane fuselages, which are not meant to create any lift. The fuselage was designed with electronic component layout in mind. The autopilot is centered within the fuselage for optimal wiring and correct computation. The pitot tube was placed on top to achieve clean air for accurate reading. The four batteries were placed in front of the wings. This also gives us easy access to removing and recharging them. The underbelly of the fuselage was used for payload too and for CG and space reasons. The camera was placed below the batteries. The GPS were placed at the front and back of the fuselage for optimal reading. The fuselage also has a structural purpose. It contains a rudder rod going through it with aluminum brackets and also three wing rods running through it. It is manufactured out of three millimeter MDF plates, some foam components, and three aluminum brackets and three carbon nylon brackets. It was cut using a laser cutter. 
Test runs were made to perfectly tolerance the final design. Autopilot. Our Autopilot is the X7 Plus from CUAV. It runs the open source PX4 software and is reliable, robust, and easy to integrate. This Autopilot is the top of the line from CUAV. It comes with triple redundant power and runs on 480 megahertz, giving us the best possible Autopilot integration for our needs. It is compatible with our RTK positioning system and comes with built-in so shock absorption as well as built-in temperature correction. Much needed for the drastic weather changes here in Canada and at the competition location. It has three gyroscope and accelerometer sensors, a magnometer and a barometer giving it unmatched spatial awareness, increasing safety and reliability. CUAV autopilots are a known standard in the industry and an autopilot which we have experience with from testing it from our past and current test drones. Lil T, our current test drone, currently running the CUAV V6X has had the best performance with CUAV autopilots. This autopilot in conjunction with PX4 and Q ground control gives us the best user experience, best reliability, and best possibility for customization due to its integration with Python. From our testing with other autopilots like Pixhawks or using Artupilot, the CUAV almost always gave us better results and easiest implementation. For both manual and autonomous flight, whether GPS assisted or simply accelerometer and barometer assisted. Obstacle avoidance. Considering the mission boundaries as an obstacle, we use a shrunk version of the mission boundary and construct a visibility graph on it to avoid mission boundaries when traveling from one lap point to the next. Then we perform an A star search on that visibility graph to find the optimal path from our current point to the next lab point. To avoid obstacles such as trees and other drones, we are first detecting and locating obstacle using the UAV's altitude and a LiDAR mounted on the top of the UAV. Before obstacles are detected, we can rely on our visibility graph path planning to ensure an optimal path. However, with dynamic obstacles being present, we need to switch to a local planner. Once we have the mapped obstacles, we will use the vector field histogram or VFH path planning algorithm to avoid the obstacles. This algorithm uses constantly updated histograms to perform computations and decide where to go for a given input. A frame containing the histogram grid will move with the drone and will be constantly updated. The algorithm will then tell the drone to head in the right direction. With the recurrent data updates, we can now constantly avoid abrupt moving objects like other drones. There were several safety measures taken to ensure each test flight was done in the safest environment possible. These measures include having our safety pilot ready at each flight, flying and testing in open environments with permission from the owners of the land, setting up cones around the drone in the takeoff and landing zone to ensure nobody got too close to the UAV during operation, and ensuring only one person was in the vicinity of the drone when manually giving it power before flight. We also took steps to mitigate possible risks by testing each part before implementing and assembling them on the drone. Also, each wire connection and electronic component is tested before each flight. In addition, we also have LiDAR to ensure the drone doesn't fly into anything and have implemented software to, a drone to return the drone back to its takeoff position, if connection is lost. Many simulations were run on the mechanical parts to show faults and fix them before flight. Summary. Over the past year, our team of dedicated engineers has worked hard to design, manufacture, and test our drone all in-house. Our robust mechanical design, paired with our reliable electrical design, creates a drone that exceeds competition criteria and safety standards for both Canadian and American drone laws. With safety always as our number one priority, our drone has been designed with checklists, redundancy, and standards of operation. Our tightly knit team with strong communication is ready and excited for our first ever participation in the SUAS competition. Here is our proof of flight. The first one is a manual flight test where Flappy gets 1,000 feet from the safety pilot and then lands safely.
The second flight test is of autonomous flight where the drone gets 200 feet from the safety pilot, transitions to manual mode, and lands manually. This third and final test flight is of autonomous flight showing that Flappy can meet all flight performance requirements.